dissection scope here um, with the Perry sticker, a little hat tip to the origins and beginnings of the bug scope. Now we're broadcasting from haps.co and this broadcast is being sent out to YouTube and Twitch and uh, Twitter and Facebook. And all comments, comments are aggregated here when I'm live, so go ahead and say hello. So I have a mystery bug that I'm going to put under the scope, will be very zoomed in, and then we'll take a look and I'll give some time for you to think about what we are looking at and maybe guess what it is. And then there'll be a reveal. So that's the plan. All right. Hi, David. I also want to give a little shout out um, to everyone who's joined the bug scope over the years and um, I, here's the word that this the broadcast um, was selected for this past year at the Entomological Society of America, the runner-up award. So thank you guys for all your support and your interest and for sharing the bug scope to make, to help being a, you're, you're a part of making it what it is today. So cheers. Okay. <laughs> oh, thanks, David. <laughs> okay. All right. So... Um, I will set up our mystery insect under this, I definitely in this landscape and really hope that Haps changes their mind and adds landscaping again. Um, so, get this over here and I have to, uh, take out our mystery very carefully and not bring it onto screen accidentally. To ruin the mystery, that would be no fun. Okay. Ah, one moment. Excuse me. <laughs> I prepare. Slip the way a little bit. Okay. I prepare our um, viewing situation. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> Need to place it on top of some things. Put it on here. Okay. All right. Okay. We have it on the stage of the microscope, dissection scope, and now we can. Uh oh, Mika's here. I might have to kick her out though, because she turned off the bug scope last last time. Um. Okay. Oh, I don't have my, not. Hi, Mika. Gotta plug in my external monitor. Okay. No. Hope you guys are doing well. Having a good 2022 so far. Hmm, my external monitor does not want to turn on for some reason. Oh, it's not plugged in. That's why. Okay. Oops. All right. We have our setup. Camera is plugged in. Hi, Sweatbeats, how are you? I will share my screen. Well, first, let me get this. Um, lined up for us all. Uh-oh. Um, I'm gonna kick out Mika before she, before she, everyone, Mika, say hi to everybody. Everyone, this is Mika. Mika, this is everybody. Um, two weeks ago, she stepped on the, on the computer and, um, Ended the bug scope broadcast early, so I'm going to remove her from the room so it doesn't happen again. <laughs> PRB. <laughs> oh. 
All right. I feel so bad kicking Mika out, but I'll go give her extra pets later after the broadcast. Okay. So, bring this into focus for us. And then, when I have it at the right level, I will reveal what we are looking at today to you. And then you guys can guess what it might be. Why can't I get it in focus? I need to put it higher up. The tricky, the tricky thing about about going macro, especially live, is that um, especially because we're looking at, we often look at insects at all different sizes. Um, there's so much adjusting that has to happen with how close you are, how magnified you are, how much light's going on your subject. So I thank you for your patience. I think it's one of those things that um, that just as a result, or just goes along with what we're doing. Um, almost like, all right, where are you? Where are you? See, it's small, you guys. That's a clue, I guess. Okay. Why oh, can't I get it in focus? Ah! All right, maybe try that. Um. Wow, I like had this earlier, but for some reason I can't get it in focus now. All right, try one more thing. Okay, there we go. I really had to move the whole setup higher. Okay. Um, okay. What's Mika's opinion about bugs? I think she likes them. I've caught her looking at the Madagascar hissing cockroaches in a fascinated way. She also sometimes likes to look at my tarantula, um, Joanne Thackeray. And, all right, what magnification shall I share these with you guys at? I think not too zoomed in. All right, you guys ready to see what we are, and guess what we are looking at? Here we go. Oh yeah, I have to bring up this on my phone so I can see your comments, unless that's been fixed by now. Okay. Heavenly dude, thanks for the one heart. Cheers. Hope you're well. Hope you found a cool bug so far in 2022. Although I know it's winter, pretty sure you're, I forget where you're located exactly, but All right, this is what we're looking at. Anybody going to guess what it is? Um, does it look like anything like from extraterrestrial, David, since you're here? May as well ask you that. <laughs> um, all right, I'm bringing up the broadcast on half so I can actually see comments. It's, unless... That's been changed, and I don't know about it. Okay. Um, okay, we have some guesses coming in. Eggs of some sort, but by whom, says Frank. David says, the bottom of feet of something. Very good guesses so far. Let's look around and zoom in at them, and so we can gather more clues. I got, you guys can get more clues and continue to ponder or refine your guesses, whichever direction it might go. And with as I zoom in, as I said before, it requires more light to get these in focus. Wow, it looks like almost looks like a weird eye of something. Um. Anyway. So here, there's a bunch of them, as you can see. And now I will zoom out as well. Oops. When I zoom out, I have to make it dark. Okay, I also want to... 
I also want to make it so that you can see the side of what we're looking at, but it's not super easy to do that. Um, I'm also remembering that Lee last week told me that the view was, oops, oops, we lost it. Um, okay, I need something to prop it up against to show you guys the side. Okay, now I have to find it again. Where are you? It's weird how it's so hard to find sometimes. I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's in the middle there, but... Oops. Where are you? So weird. Oh, maybe this will help. Oh, there it is. This reminds me now of those games where it goes from blurry to in focus. <laughs> Which way? I think down to get in focus? Or is it up to get in focus? Right now? I'm not sure. Oh, up seems like it's coming into focus. Yes, there we go. What is it? Do, 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 do. That we are looking at. Pablo, hello. Thanks for the burst. Oh, let me make it brighter too. There's, there is some debris on these, FYI. I guess the pronouns I'm using for this also probably helps give clues. So there's debris, so maybe I can clean it off also as we go. But let's also... All right, I will reveal what it is in a minute. But first, we'll look a little more at this weird architecture that we're seeing. So those white things are what we were looking at before. And now you can see the rest of the many things that we're looking at. Um, yeah, honey, the, there was a distinct pattern going on there. Um, and so it, it does have very unique, like, clustering patterns, what we're looking at. And I can tell you as a major clue, this is a species that we've seen on the bug scope across the last couple of months. But we haven't seen another clue. I'm dropping all the clues now and eventually the answer very shortly. Um, so if you want to try to guess, don't stop watching, I guess, and go watch the replay. <laughs> Or um, guess right now, or forever hold your peace. So, so these are eggs. So good guessing, Frank. And they're all clustered together. And this group of insects tends to have really interestingly patterned egg clustering. So um, kind of going with that observation or that direction you were thinking, heavenly do. They tend to have these clusters that form these interesting patterns in the way that they're adhered together. <laughs> Frank says BRB watching all the replays to figure out what it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> Lucia, hello, how are you? Good to see you. Um, okay, now I'll zoom out so you guys can see the whole thing to give you more clues. They are eggs that we're looking at. They're sideways right now. Whoops. Hopefully no one here has trypophobia, that's too bad. I have a little bit of trypophobia, I'd say, which is that phobia of looking at lots of holes. But this one doesn't bother me too much when it comes to trypophobia. So right now it's leaning sideways on my forceps. Um, and I'll put my, I can put my finger here maybe to give you guys a sense of scale, because these are tiny. Here's, there's my finger. You can see the ridges of my finger. So you can tell they're very tiny. 
Individually, they're very tiny. But that's how a lot of insects are. They start off so tiny. Okay. Whoops. Then if I go this way, you can see there's a lot of eggs. How many? Next question. How many eggs are there? I have not counted. We can count right now, though. Ready? Everyone. Oops. Trying to get them all in focus. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46. Is there 47 in there? Maybe. Oops, wrong way. It's so hard to move this. And know, like, know which way to move it um, so I don't move it off the screen. I think there's 47. A little hard to tell. Um, yeah, but about 50. That's right. <laughs> On a roll. Okay, so the answer of whose eggs? That's the next thing. Frank, have you finished watching all the replays by now? Have you figured it out? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, I'll turn this sideways um, so we can see the top again, all clustered together like this, of these eggs that were glued together. Oops. Ah! I need to play my own game of like moving things under the scope in the right direction because it's, I have not gotten used to that. It almost looks like a map of the USA. All 50 states represented with each egg. <laughs> minus Hawaii and Alaska. They were brought in for the photograph. Um, oh no! <laughs> okay. Alright, let me just try to get it all... Darn it. I like, don't know the right way to move this. Okay. Oh, other way. It's okay. <laughs> there we go. The family picture is all there. Oh yeah, so I can cut them off for sure now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49. Wow, there are exactly 50. Would you look at that? <laughs> Smile eggs for the picture. <laughs> um, yeah, so th this is a cluster of 50 eggs in rows of about five five by ten approximately so pretty cool and i'll zoom in for anybody who missed the beginning and then i will reveal finally once and for all what insect this is anybody want to guess what order of insects so um orders are the level that's like um order means like well it's hard to describe right now off the top of my head but like lepidopter or moth and butterflies Odonata are dragonflies and damselflies. Um, bees, wasps, and sawflies are hymenoptera. Odonata, oh sorry, I did that already. Um, Neuroptera are net winged bugs. Hemiptera are um, like stink bugs and assassin bugs and cicadas and plant hoppers and all those things. Aphids too. And then diptera are flies. And what other insect groups are there? Um, ephemeropter are mayflies, plecoptera are stoneflies, etc, etc. So we have some guesses here. Hi, Peter. How's it going? It is a bug, Peter. <laughs> um, a bunch of eggs that we're looking at for anybody tuning in now. Welcome. Um, a cluster of 50 eggs laid, laid by... Here's another clue, because I was saying that what we're looking at are the eggs of something we've talked about in the bug scope for the last... Oh, sometime across the last couple of months. But I can tell you beyond that, it's not something we've, we've just talked about in the bug scope, but it's an insect that was featured on the bug scope across the last couple of months that laid these eggs. That's a major clue, I'd say, as well. Um, so we have some guesses of bees, wasp, um, and to tell the truth, you guys, perhaps unknowingly, um, Peter in the comments here is by saying bug said the right 
insect order. Because while here on the bug scope, I do, con I do call everything a bug. I use that general colloquial word, common word to cover all of the bugs and whatnot. Um, in entomology, when you talk about different insect groups, hemiptera are called true bugs for whatever reason, just what they are. So these, the answer for what order, what insect order when it comes to kingdom, phylum, class, class insecta, order, the order is hemiptera. So um, not beetles in this case, coleoptera, not cicada. Um, okay, I will share now too that the mother unfortunately has passed away since laying the eggs. That is not super uncommon in the insect world. That happens with um, praying mantises and that often happens with overwintering insects where they maybe overwinter in egg form. So once they lay their eggs, their life cycle is their life cycle is complete and then they just kind of die of old age. So that's what happened to the mom in this case. So ready for the reveal? And the mom sadly recently passed away too. So she will not get to meet her babies, but we will get to meet her babies and I'll make sure to take good care of them for her. All right, remember her? This is the wheel bug. Um, a type of assassin bug is what the family is, Regiviidae. I'm blanking out on the specific name, sci uh, scientific name uh, for this species, but it's a wheel bug that we talked about about a month or two ago. I think only a month ago even on the bug scope. Um, and she's the mom and she laid these beautiful, bizarre, otherworldly eggs that we're looking at today. Yep. Yep. So, oh, good timing, David, <laughs> right in time. The, the reveal is right in time for your meeting on the hour. So, do you like, do they like potato vines, asks Heavenly in the chat. And they are a type of insect that is, as the name suggests, assassin bugs. Well, I mean, they could, I guess some bugs also kind of like assassinate plants too, but we don't really think about it that way when animals are grazing and eating plants but um they eat other insects so if anything as a gardener they're considered a beneficial insect so you'd be del you'd be very happy to come across these eggs in your yard and it's my understanding that since they overwinter as eggs they're probably not going to hatch these eggs probably won't hatch for like several months which um yeah, I don't know when they're going to hatch exactly, but I'm going to keep them in a cool place that doesn't get too des that doesn't desiccate too much. And um, that way uh, they can overwinter and not emerge too early because that's always very tricky um, if an insect emerges too early. Which, if any of you guys have ever had a praying mantis egg case on your Christmas tree, um, that may be a situation where the eggs hatch way too early. <laughs> um oh good heavenly glad to hear that heavenly says you make understanding bug life so much easier for me cheers <laughs> okay so let's also look at the mama underneath the scope too i think when i showed her last time we just looked at her i think we only looked at her um like with my mac camera macro lens so let's take a look at her underneath this dissection scope as well before we do that, since we now I now revealed what it is that we're looking at, I do want to show you all the side view one more time because the top of these eggs are so weird. Like they have these weird cup caps on them. I don't really know why. I found this one scientific article that talks about some other kind of um, assassin bug egg situation, which suggested that maybe it has to do with I didn't fully understand it but maybe um I don't know it might, have, might have something to do with helping to space out the eggs so that they can get enough of a gas exchange for the developing embryos I'm not totally sure but it's a very interesting and weird feature um and like to think that she created it with 
egg-laying. Like, it's not like she took her hands and molded it together. It just, like, came out of her abdomen. Yeah, so. Where do you find those? Yeah, these are, you can find these pretty much all across the east coast of the USA. This one, um, these eggs, which, oh, well, the eggs actually, I don't know if you're talking about the species. I'm guessing the species you can find around all around the East Coast, all the way north, basically, to all the way south, um, called the wheel, the wheel bug because of, once again, um, the that ridge there gave it. We'll look at it in a moment underneath the scope, but that ridge is what gave it that name, the wheel bug. Um, and, yeah, she's still, because she's somewhat... Um, she hasn't stiffened yet. Okay. Um, what's it called? But the eggs you can find on like bark, on the side of bark. I've never found the eggs in the wild though. They're probably pretty camouflaged and tucked away because all insects have various methods for protecting their offspring from being parasitized. That's a big risk. So thanks for the one heart. Peter. Okay, before we look at the mom, once again, let's look at the side of the eggs because they're just so weird. Weirdly awesome. Oops. It's like very hard. They're so delicate too. Okay. Thanks for the celebration. Okay. Let's move this over. Back into view. Oops. I think I'm getting better at moving things under the scope. Cool. Hopefully you can see it okay. I just want to zoom in to other direction yeah the side those sides oops wait I lost it okay there it is and once again there's a little bit of debris from the substrate that was in the terra terrarium where I was keeping um, these bugs. Yeah, so that top of the eggs is so weird. So weird and wonderful. Um, let me zoom in. Like it just almost looks like these festive little tassels. Okay. How long until they're born? Probably several months since they overwinter as eggs. I'm also going to take these forceps. So these are some forceps that I unpacked during that bioquip, like entomology supplies, unboxing broadcast that I did a while back. I'm going to take them and uh, help to take off a little bit of the debris that I'm seeing on these eggs. Oops. Uh-oh. Did not really work. Well... Maybe later I'll do that, I suppose. Okay. Anyway, so yeah, here are those eggs. Pretty wild looking. I feel like I'd guess it was a fungus or something when I first looked at it. I don't even know what those bristle things are on the top. But pretty sweet. A lot of questions. Why don't you just take a closer look? It just reveals all these extra questions. And that's what happens oftentimes in science. You, try, you find information. We're getting all this information about what the eggs look like. That's just leading to more questions about what on earth is going on here and why did it come? Why is this all advantageous in the scheme of evolution? What does it do for this insect when it comes to survival and the eggs like um, doing what they need to do to uh, go along and eventually hatch? Okay, good. I'm glad the image is sharp. All right, so now we'll look at the mama. Say hello to the mama bug, putting her here on the stage with the eggs and taking away so we'll zoom out a bit Oops. Oh, did I zoom out I did zoom out 
Zooming out means I need to turn the, this, the brightness down. And let's look at her eyes, her beautiful eyes. So here's the mom. And remember how I said that they eat other bugs? So they're considered beneficial by gardeners? Um, we're look, what we're looking at right now is her face. And you can see her front two legs. On, well, it looks like this. So, or more like this. This is her. <laughs> um, she has her legs on either side of her head. And then her beak is what we call it. Or that pointy part that she uses to stab insects, to assassinate them and eat them. That's what's in the center there. And it's really, it's so interesting to me how it's reddish because a lot of animals and even plants, if they eat um, a lot, just have like red mouths. If you think about it, carnivorous plants have red mouths. Um, they have that reddish beak with the, with the black tip. The black tip sort of signi signifies, um, remember when, if you were at the Bugs and Miss celebration, Sam was like, sclerotization, what? What is this, Isa? And <laughs> that was, um, that, that's the whole process where the exoskeleton hardens um, to become strong. That happens especially after um, molting. They're really soft when they molt, and then they kind of puff themselves up a little bit with some air or something, and then they're able to... Um, then they harden their exoskeleton so that they can be strong and go on and continue on. So the mouth parts of insects are usually especially sclerotized. They're very hardened and that you can see because it's so dark there. Yes. Yes. May she rest in peace. Thank you. Um, all right. Let's look at her eyes because her eyes are really beautiful and they still haven't, they haven't dried yet. So she still has a very beautiful, um, like shininess about her eyes right now, which will eventually go away because um, it's like a liquid iridescence that we're seeing when we look at her eyes right now. They'll just kind of go dark later. So we are, in a way, memori memorializing or documenting her eye color right now with this, what, what we're doing right now in the broadcast. I'm going to take away that little bit of debris that I see right by her beak too. I don't know if you guys saw that as well, but... I'm going to take that away. Yeah, there's a, there's like a little piece of thread or something that I'm going to take out very carefully. There we go. A little cleaned up. Okay. Isn't that so wild, too, how, like, that beak comes out from way more forward? Oh, well, actually, no. That's like the, we're looking at her upside down, so that is actually, like, below the eyes. Okay. Let's... Zoom in this way as well, and then get that eye in focus. Oh, it's so lovely and like silvery. How far can we go? And wow, look at the, all those little fine hairs. Like she's a very velvety or fuzzy animal or insect that it almost looks like a dog dog fur or something like that mammal fur in a way but those are all what we call in entomology seedy so lots of little hairs so there she is r.i.p sweet bat her name's bat um we'll take good care of your babies and appreciate them so much when they're born um moment I'm doing a broadcast right now. Right. And then there's the other eye. Oh, the hairiness fits thematically with the egg tops. Yeah, that's true. Kind of a little, a little bit of a furry slash shaggy nature. And then, oh, let me zoom out. Zoom out for a bigger picture of her. Oh, 
And we'll just do a scan down her body to look at her, her morphology. I'm going to do one picture as well. How do I take a picture? I forgot how to take a picture. Capture? Snap! Woo! Alright, we took a picture. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go this way. Yeah, she's completely covered with those CD, which is interesting. I don't... Oh, you know, it probably makes her more slippery because she prob cause she's so big. She's probably really easy to spot, um, like, for a bird or something like that. And they do have venom, which helps protect them. just want to see if these are different colored scales or debris. There's some debris in here. Wow, it's, like, very sandy. Um, trying to get her in focus. It's a little hard to get this part in focus because um, there's a lot of, it's curved, so we're, what we're looking at is not all in one, um, it's not all on one plane, it's cur like looking at an arm really, really close, um, but it is pretty interesting, all those hairs and how it catches up so much debris, and I bet you, I bet you that it helps with camouflage, because then this this insect is going to pick up little bits of its environment. If it's like a bright colored sand, it's going to pick up bright colored sand in its seedy or hairs. If it's in a dark environment, it's going to pick up dark little seedy and debris from its environment to help it um, camouflage. That's my guess about what's going on here. Because there are a bunch of insects that do those sorts of things where they take things from their environment and cover themselves. So, Pippin, hello! How's it going? Everyone that's been here in the comments is going to be one of our guests on the bug scope in April. Um, now that we have those capabilities back on HAPS, I'm looking forward to bringing guests back to the bug scope. Okay, let me this. Yeah, so I'll, I'll zoom back out now. We can look at the other parts of her, but it just is pretty amazing how many bits of debris are on her body. And I can't help but wonder if it's even... A bit if she even has a bit of stickiness to help or like what's going on I think we need like an SEM a scanning electron microscope to really figure out what's going on here um, with all the debris and to answer those questions so there's an idea it could have been looked at already I'm not sure I'll have to look later to see if anyone's studied the morphology and architecture of the wheel bugs wheel bugs body because there is another assassin bug zealous is the genus and the zealous assassin bug does have there are the eggs down there the zealous assassin bug does have sticky legs for capturing prey whoops too dark let's get this back in focus the feet are in focus but that's not the majority of what we're taking a look at here. I don't know why it's so like blown out, but still the contrast seems really high. Okay. okay going down the body. Oops. Um. Hmm. Yeah, you can see she has so many hairs all over her body. I'm not sure what those little, like, that row of, like, black holes are down the side of her body. It might have to do with, it might be her spiracles for breathing. I'm not really sure. We can take a closer look. Let's take a closer look at that. Zoom, 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 focus, focus, focus. I'm not sure if we'll be able to see anything from this angle, but we will try. Yeah, I can't see. Oops. Um, yeah, I really cannot tell. I think I'd have to... Um, 
do a lot of repositioning. I'm not going to do that right now because I think it'd be a lot of downtime for you, the viewers. But I'm going to guess that that's where the spiracles are, aka openings on the insect's body to allow gas exchange. Okay, and then we're going to look at her, probably where, the part where she lays the eggs. Ovipositor. They don't have... Oops. This is her, the tip of her abdomen. I'm guessing the eggs come out of here. And one thing that I want to point out about that, well, one, if this, sorry if that this makes anyone feel uncomfortable that we're looking at the private parts of an animal or insect. This happens a lot in entomology because it's oftentimes needed to get information about the biology and also identify different species. Um, so it's pretty commonplace for entomology. Um, but what's so interesting here, I think, too, is that like it's a female, but she doesn't have an ovipositor. Like she doesn't have a long, pointy stinger, as some people might call them, for placing eggs. And that's because she's not trying to. She's not placing her eggs in any like hard to reach places. It's not like katydids where they're slitting their eggs between into stems or between pieces of plant um, cuticle. And so she's literally just putting it right on top of a piece of bark or something like that. So she doesn't need anything fancy for that. She just um, needs to place them and glue them together and glue them onto the surface of what, um, of where she has, she chose to put them. So I don't know how, I just, I guess each egg is probably formed inside her body and comes out the way it is, but it's just pretty amazing that they look the way that they look. I'll go back to them. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't think there's anything else on her body to specifically show at the moment, unless we flipped her over, but I think that we looked at most of the standout features. Um, oh, we can look at her, her wings for one moment. Oh, definitely, Frank. A uh, comment here saying, not wiping away the previous laid eggs can't be easy. Yeah, like how do you even like maneuver around them and not accidentally knock the eggs to the side while they're still recently glued and put in place and all that? So here is some of her, oh, actually this is a great thing to share because here is the back of her wings. They can fly, these assassin bugs. Um, and as their the order suggests, they're hemiptera, hemi meaning half, and ptera meaning winged. And you can literally see like why it's called that in this image, because the back you can see clearly member membranous wing, and then the front half is sort of you can ha it's half member membranous and half like kind of thicker, and that you can see decently clearly here. It's a little hard to see, I think, this section because it's shiny and shininess as if you've been with us for other broadcasts looking up close, shininess is like for whatever reason kind of hard to capture um, and show without it looking kind of messed up or blurry or something like that. But we will... You can see that that front, that top part looks sort of like, the part to the right looks sort of like how her legs looked or the rest of her body looked. But then this part on the left side that's a little mm, orangey reddy, reddish is more typical wing membrane for an insect. So hemiptera half-winged, that's what we're looking at right here. The reason for why they're called um, half-winged. Oops, let me get that back in focus. And then going back up to her head, you can, here's the wheel that gives the name the wheel bug. That ridge. Um, is that focus? I think I have to turn the brightness down too. Oh, wrong direction. 
Yeah, there's the ridge, the wheel, and then finally, here is her head. Oh, and here, I guess, at the top of her head, I can also show her ocelli. So let's zoom into her head. Can they see, question in the chat, can they see what their rear do end does? Oh, that's a great question. You know what's, okay. So I don't know the answer for this specific insect or group, but light, some light sensing um, receptors have been found on butterfly abdomens, which I'm guessing supposedly helps with laying eggs. So like very, very simple, very, very simple photoreception um, things. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's found on other insects too. Yeah. I was like, what? When I heard that. <laughs> Pretty mind-blowing. But um, yeah, so cool. Okay. Yeah, so you can see her compound eyes, which we saw from the other side. You can see her antenna coming out from the top of her head. I'll zoom out to look at her antenna. There they are. Sorry for focus for anyone coming in right now being like, oh, things are kind of in focus or they're not. And that's because when you look this, this magnified, like the, our depth of focus, of what we're able to see in focus is really, really thin. That's why if you ever see macro photos that are really up close to an insect, it's like multiple layers of photos pushed together um, as a stacked image. But we can't do a stacked image when we're looking at it live, as far as I know has not been figured out yet. Okay, so you can see her eye, which has that ring. You can really see the ring light on her eye here. And then that orange thing right behind the eye is a simple eye called an ocelli. There's the compound eye, which we saw from below. And then that red thing on the left that also catches the ring light a little bit, that's the ocelli. It looks like she just has two ocelli. Insects may have anywhere from no ocelli to three ocelli and I think she I think she has two probably one on either side um so yeah that's our, our RIP bat bat is going to be pinned and preserved with scientific data so that and I'll retain her so we can have her for both research and education and the bug scope um, and eventually one day I'll deposit her into a museum to um, live on and um, for generations to come, I hope. So, Mark, thanks for subscribing. Hello. Can she turn her head? And question in the chat. It looks like she can wiggle her head back and forth a little bit, but I think she'll mostly turn her body. And also, you know what's interesting, actually, I just realized? The way that her eyes are, they're just like literally on either side of the head. Like, if you think about that with mammals, mammals, the predatory mammals, tend to have their eyes in front. And the herbivorous, the herbivores tend to have their eyes on the side. And a lot of insects do tend to have their eyes so that, like, some of their eyes in the front. And, I don't know, with, with this wheel bug, it's very unique because, I mean, I think a lot of the head... Morphology is probably determined by that huge beak. It's, I th it seems like it's really largely driven by management of that huge beak, and you can see how it's tucked below. And having that longer head allows a little more space for tucking, I think, of that. Um, but also the way the eyes are like that, she, she could definitely see in the front and probably the back pretty well too. So... I wonder if she can see what's right. In, I wonder if there's a blind spot, though, like right in the very front. Hard to say. Yeah, hard to know for sure. Um, OK. All right. Well, let's zoom. yeah, I mean, it looks like there's the neck joint from the head to the thorax. And it looks like there's some mobility there. I don't really remember so much when she was alive, like seeing distinct head movements. She definitely would like move her body and rotate her body around 
Um, but yeah. All right, I'm going to bring the eggs back into focus and I guess wrap up the bug scope from there. But thanks guys for joining. Thanks for guessing what insect we were looking at. And I'll keep you posted on if the, on when the eggs hatch. And in the meantime though, if anybody hears, a, hears word about there being some sort of tiny like camera trap or something like that available, for bugs, that would be awesome. That's my, that's on the bug scope wish list. A camera, a mini mini camera trap, so that that's basically like a baby monitor. Because one thing that's so tough about having overwinter overwintering eggs is knowing when they hatch. I don't want to miss when they hatch. I want to be, I want to make sure I don't like. It can just be hard. It just it's tricky. You have to put them in a spot where they'll be in what overwinter in a cool place, but then at the same time where you're not going to forget about them, and so yeah, maybe I'll just like set a twice a week, I think a twice a week reminder to check on them when it comes in like a month or two, I think that'll work, so, so yeah, all right, thanks everybody for joining, if you don't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, um, and uh, what's it called? And share with a friend who might want to have fun guessing what insect this is that we came across today. The bizarre and the beautiful world of entomology is what we discover here and explore here on the bug scope. Um, and so thanks for joining. Yeah, take care and see, I'm going to zoom in a bunch to end this. Um, take, it looks like a bunch of like ceramic little dishes. <laughs> um, because the glaze, I think maybe because each one's so kind of different, like how it w what would happen if you had a bunch of the same like plates, like no matter what, the glaze would turn out kind of differently on each one. So it reminds me of that. Um, oh, yeah. Fr yeah, Frank, good point. Um, light can also sometimes trigger hatching. So if you if you ever are, if you ever come across something, general advice for anybody who's trying to overwinter insects, you want to not expose them to too much artificial light because, and also keep them cool as if, kind of as if they're outside, but also you have to be careful that they don't desiccate, which is why the refrigerator isn't always the best spot because that, that's, there's risk of desiccation in the fridge. Um, but then also if there's too much light, that's beyond regular daylight hours for their, where they would, where their natural habitat is, they might receive that light information and the growing days is an indicator to many insects that spring is coming um, and can trigger an early emergence so so yeah I'm gonna put them out of the way but not too far out of the way that they get lost <laughs> um, and I'll keep you guys all posted for in a couple months hopefully when they hatch so cheers everyone thanks for joining today here I will end the presentation on the screen so I can give a full oh I didn't wait oh interesting I can switch and see the comments on my computer while doing this good to know um very good to know all right cool um cool all right cheers go find a cool bug this week and if you do tell me about it tweet me about it something like that um adios take care from me and um, the eggies, the little eggs. <laughs>